Hi everyone. I know it's been a bit of time since I've made a video, uh, but I've kind of been dealing with a major life change over the past couple of months. So I put some making some of my videos on hold. I know that I promised to make the next installation of the process series, uh, which I will get to as my next video. But I thought that I would, you know, dip my toes back into the water of making videos by doing something a little bit simpler. So this is going to show off one of the new features for my library called Ziggler. I'll put links below. And what this library does is it allows you to write a low level programming language called Zig uh, inside of your Elixir modules. And I've taken a lot of effort to make a tight coupling between Elixir and Zig. And I think that this new feature really shows off some of the things that I've been able to do. Okay, so let's get started. First, the thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to use Zig. Uh, and for this particular feature, you do need to link libc. All right, and the is tilde z sigil will create code uh, will create a code fence in which your zig code resides. So let's go ahead and write a silly function and this function is going to add 10 and we're going to take a value which is going to be some sort of integer maybe unsigned 64 bit integer and then we're going to um, return uh, value plus 10. So pretty straightforward, right? Um, and let's go ahead and try and compile this. And oh, uh, Ziggler will warn us that it hasn't found any NIFs. And that's because I need to label this as a NIF. And that activates this and surfaces it up to the module. OK, so running this again. And you know, let's pick a nice number and add 10 to it. And of course, it returns the value that you would expect um, having gone through this low level function. OK, um, now uh, let's say that we wanted to create some sort of filter where certain values that we don't like uh, trigger an error. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an error condition. So const my errors. Error. We're going to call this, we'll call an error bad value for no other reason than we don't like this value. Um, and then let's write a function uh, reject bad values. It's going to take a u64. And this is going to only return an error if we don't like this value. And in all other cases, it's just going to be a void function. OK, so let's do this. Return my errors bad value. OK, so that should do that. And the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to hook this up Oh, uh, sorry, let's, we need to <laughs> create a guard condition. So if value equals some number we don't like, maybe that return my errors at that bad value. Great. Um, and then now we need to hook this up here. And the way you do that is with the try statement. Okay, so how this works is it will execute the reject bad values function and if an error is returned, the try statement will um, forward that error up to the add 10 function and, and cause add 10 to be an error. But now if we compile this, um, we should see a couple of errors. And it's saying, first of all, apparently I've forgotten a semicolon somewhere. Um, oh, here, I see, so line eight. 
is missing a semicolon prior to it. So let's do that. Let's try and compile it again. And now it's going to say function cannot return an error on line 16. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so it says, uh, so right. When the try statement forwards the error, it's the this is the equivalent of reject bad values, catch error, return error. And this it currently is not capable of returning an error. So let's do this to fix that. All right, so that should do it. So now the function signature here has changed, of course. And it looks like it compiles. So, uh, so Elixir and Ziggler like what this code, uh, how this code works. And so let's see what happens. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and run it against a value that we do like. And we still get 57, which is exactly 10 plus 47, which is what you would expect. Now let's input the bad value. So in this case, we, 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 we are filtering out on 42. And lo and behold, we get a, we get a raise. Um, it's an error that is tied explicitly to this module. So hidden behind the scenes, what Ziegler has done is it's created an error exception condition for this, uh, for this module and all, and all uh, Zig code that runs from this module. Um, it's identified correctly that the, uh, that the, that the type of the error is dot bad value. And it's telling us that. And here's the other thing that's happening. It is giving us what is called in Zig an error return trace. So uh, at the bottom, this is this value here is the stack trace for Elixir. And then everything above here is the error return trace for, for Zig. And so let's walk through this error return trace. So add 10 um, with, uh, from the playground. And then, so it calls the add 10 function from the playground, right? And then it goes into this add 10 function that's inside of Zig on line 14. And it says that line 14 is the line where that error emanated from. So this return, this is where the return, so the try is equivalent to catch error return error, right? And so that's where the return statement for, um, that, that triggered the er error came from. We can see that calls reject bad values, and that corresponds to this line, right? Reject bad values. And line nine. And so this is exactly where the return statement was. So kind of, you know, we it might not have been that way. Maybe there's a comment. And maybe there's another comment. So if we put these lines in and then we run the same thing again, we should see uh, we should see the line numbers the return line numbers drift. So zig code dot at 10, 42. And then see it says line 10 now and line and line 16. So these these lines correspond to the trace for where the bad value uh, error was returned by your zig code. Okay, so um, this isn't completely done. Uh, there might be some little tweaks here and there. And for certain, it doesn't work with threaded or um, threaded or yielding NIFs yet, although I will be working on getting those to work. Um, but yeah, this this feature will, will drop in Ziggler 0.8.0. I'm super excited about it. And hopefully this will, you know, uh, I know not too many people are really using this yet, but you know, it'll encourage you that if you have a use case for low level code, this is a good way to really get a lot of value out of out of the entire debug and maintenance process for these sorts of um, these sorts of uh, integrations between low level code and high level code. Okay, well, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I will see you soon with uh, more installations of the process series.